Thank you very much, Prime Minister and dear friend. Ladies and gentlemen, my task is only half easy as I thought when um, discussing and interpreting the sense, the meaning of um, such a rich noun like the wall, it certainly doesn't come only to music, but to the very self of us. 25 years ago this autumn, brave men and women took to the streets to declare, wir sind das Volk, we are the people and brought down that terrible wall. After the first confused announcement about permitting free travel to the West was made, the whole formidable structure with its fearsome watchtowers, sentinels, barbed wire and guard dogs had become unnecessary. The night the Berlin Wall fell, the crowd knew that if they pushed hard enough, they would finally have their way. As the Berliners were opening bottles of Zekt in celebration, many were still uncertain what exactly was happening. A day, before they would, a day before, they would have been shot for being there. Yet 25 years after the day of November the 9th, we know that the moment from which a great continent was to come together had been marked. A journey that today takes 14 minutes only by S-Bahn from the heart of the East Berlin to the heart of the West Berlin. That journey took the East Germans roughly 28 years. The year 1989 was, has not finished casting its lessons upon our lives and ideas, but it also did not manage to shed its light into every shadowy nook and cranny of Europe. We continue to live today between our desire to foster a European universalism and the construction of a national identity. The central story of the European Union had always been a battle for its unity. This was not to be only a physical unification as it was at first for Germany, but an unification of minds and spirits working towards the same goals of liberty, tolerance, free movement of individuals, and the access to a free market. As it was beautifully marked in Berlin this day, five years ago, with an artistic fall of domino pieces, our common struggle began with the fall of communist countries in an unthinkable snowball effect. Or, in the words of Lech Wałęsa, quote, the fall of the Berlin Wall makes for nice pictures, but it all started in the shipyards." Unquote. Earlier that year, on February the 6th, 1989, the round table talks began between the Polish government and members of the underground labor union Solidarność. By October 23rd, Hungary adopted the new constitution allowing a multi-party system and open elections. And then Berliners tore down the wall and the world was changed. Two Berlins became one, two Germanys became one, and it was time for Europe to become one as well. Czechoslovakia followed when a non-communist government took the country's reins on December the 5th, and then elected Václav Havel for president. Protests in Bulgaria led to the removal of the Bulgarian Communist Party leader, and lastly, Romania underwent a bloody revolution. Nicolae Ceausescu was shot and reformist communists took over. This short digression into history was meant as a reminder of how fast things can change. How quickly a turn of events can reshape a continent and international relations alike. Today the world faces new challenges. Communism is over in Europe, and it's unlikely that it will be ever be present in similar modes again. But authoritarianism still lurks in the dark and shows its face more often than we would care to see it. Once communism fell, the simplest way to explain the world was gone. This left room for a lot of confusion. Until 1981, 1989, there was black and white, the angels, 
angels and devils, the good and the worse. Now, communism tried to level everything, individual wills seen as collective identities, tradition replaced with imposed daily habits, tensions frozen for, for over 40 years re-emerged. And what was not solved but narcotized by the communist rule was and still is in search of a, of a resolution. It was in 1989 that we won our freedom. But freedom does not in itself make democracy. Democracy is the institutionalization of liberal laws and the long-term internalization of these laws by the society. Wir sind das Volk. What Berliners cried on November 9, 1989, meant assuming the responsibility for the outcome of the uprise as well. Every citizen became responsible for himself and for the effect that he alone could have on shaping the new order. They stood up for the right to hold free elections. Then they did the hard work of reforming their economies, opening up labor markets, facing severance, and the need for reprofessionalization, dealing with wounds of the past and facing the truth once the files of the Stasi were open. But are we now right to say that 25 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, 25 years after the fall of the communism, have we all, and I underline all, fulfilled the mission we embarked upon at that moment. <laughs> European leaders who foster democratic regression and corruption, or those who commend, quote unquote, illiberal democracy, cannot answer with an yay to this question. By cultivating nationalism, intolerance, and despise for the rule of law, these Men undermine their nation's security, freedom, and prosperity. And there is still a long way to go, and there is little time to rest. At the 20th anniversary of the fall of the, the wall in Berlin, President Medvedev, at that time President of Russia, stood on stage with Chancellor Merkel and said, quote, here in Berlin, we all hope that the time of confrontation is in the past. I hope we all have rejected the barriers that divided, divided us before, unquote. Five years later, later, this powerful, hopeful statement is suspended by the aggressive actions undertaken by the Russian Federation against the vulnerable yet sovereign European state, namely Ukraine. Clearly, there is little time to rest for the watchdogs of democratic order. But we are at a festive time, a time to rejoice and grasp the full extent of our power, the power of our citizens. Rule through force can only be temporary. The people, thus folk, will evermore claim their right to revolt, and it is thus folk that is made of individuals like myself and yourselves, different in nationality, race, religion, political doctrine, background, yet gathered around the same table that nurtures cooperation, dialogue, and cultural exchange. And there should be no walls between free people. Nevertheless, there are walls within ourselves. One doesn't need to build a cement wall to separate ideologies or people. It is enough, it is enough to lie on people, it is enough to cheat on them, to trick them into a different and a vicious interpretation of reality. It is about the wall in our minds that should be torn down daily, not just once in decades. 25 years after 1989, it is a difference between what we thought we brought down and today when we realize how difficult it is to tear down the understanding of differences between us. That wall 
within ourselves can be personalized. It is the wall that separates moral values from immoral sentences, good from worse. It is built in Europe today in political minds on the foundations of nostalgia, on the foundations of improper understanding of political evolution. And yes, there are political people who care a lot about building walls within ourselves. It is that wall that was built in the beginning of this year that separates today Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova from Europe, because it was built on the foundations of conditionalities, false conditionalities. If without me, then without a future, says Moscow. Those walls were built within ourselves on the demonization of Europe on the demonization of the liberal values the European Union was built upon. These walls are isolating people. In their shadows grow from the seeds of nationalism the new so-called illiberal democracies, that is, the new forms of authoritarianism. They isolate people and prevent themselves from forming their own free communities. Those walls within our minds annihilate the civic spirit and annihilate the very sense of togetherness and mutual help. They annihilate perspectives. Which means that 25 years after 1989, while we celebrate the way the Berlin Wall was torn down, we still have to fight to tore down, to tear down the walls within our minds, the, world, the walls of our own limitations. Hopefully, this struggle of ours can be achieved, and in the end, the victory against those inner walls will be the final victory of the European Union. Thank you very much.